Hey, it's Russell Lovers. Mark here from Whole Lot. They love. We got Zach with me. If you were with us a half hour ago, we took a look at some grinders uh, with Zach. Zach, tell me a little bit about your background before we get into some good, better, best high end espresso level. Yeah, so I've been in the coffee industry for about 12 years now, from uh, shop to shop, roasting for quite a few years, and now helping out with education and training for a lot of coffee shops around here and, uh, you know, getting them some good deals on commercial equipment. And we're going to take a look at the machines. We'll make a drink on each. Here we got the Pro 500, Pro 600, and oh boy, this amazing AMG version of the Synchronica Limited Edition. We'll talk more about that. And you know, if you wanted to, you can get a coffee cast. That's a one-on-one, -on -one 20 minute session with an expert kind of via Zoom. So you can ask questions and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And Zach, you, you they, you might be one of the guys that they get on there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I've done this exact table on a coffee cast before. These are pretty frequently asked and compared uh, uh, machines right here, so. Yeah, these, yeah. these are like high-level prosumer machines. Uh, but again, we'll kind of go down the line with capabilities and what they do mm -hmm. so you can learn about that. So, but if you want to get that one-on-one -on -one demo, use our coffee cast. You can sign up at Whole Lot They Love for that. Um, also go there, you know, make an account. Opt in for the emails, that's where you'll get subscriber only discounts. We've got a lot of great deals going on this time of year, of course, uh, so you can really score a bargain now, uh, but you'll get ex members only like subscriber exclusive deals if you sign up for that. Um, beyond the coffee cast, if you wanted to get some help via phone right now from an expert, um, you can chat in a whole lot to love, or you can give us a call. Uh, on the weekends right now, we're going uh, 10 a.m. to 5.30 Eastern with that, where you can actually talk to somebody if you have questions about any of the products that we carry. And our return policy, that's extended through January 15th. So if you bought something like today, when this is live, you got till January 15th to return it if you know, you're not completely happy with it. Um, or 30 days, whichever is longer. And all these machines, I gotta tell you, um, we've run a, a service center here for more than 20 years. And we personally service all these, got a lot of techs over in the shop. Uh, that work on that, but all these come with a three-year warranty, the prosumer level machines that a whole lot they love. So let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna look at. So we've got a variety here. Again, the Profitech Pro 400. This is a heat exchange boiler machine with a vibration pump. Yep. Then we're gonna go to the uh, Pro 600. This is a dual boiler machine uh, with a vibration pump. Uh, these two are not plumbable. Uh, and then we go over to the big boy here. This is the rotary pump. Uh, AMG version of Synchronica. This is special limited edition. It's actually numbered. We have number two right here of a run of a thousand. Uh, special collaboration between two great German uh, companies, AMG and ECM. This one's got carbon fiber on it. Just a beautiful machine. My one of, yeah, it is my favorite dual boiler prosumer level machine. And you can see all kinds of special treatments on this that we'll take a better look at. But let's start over here with the Pro 500. Uh, long time favorite heat exchange boiler of mine. Um, all of these can be equipped with flow control. You'd see that right up here. It'll allow you to like finesse some uh, higher end coffees or do different things with other coffees as well by changing the flow around. So the heat exchange boiler, if you don't know, it uses a single boiler but can brew and steam at the same time, right? Yep, and this thermo siphon is extremely accurate. Uh, I've used it multiple times back to back and you get really consistent temperatures and results every single time. Yeah, when you look at a machine like this, it'll be like that sweet zone after turn on when they're, where they're right at temperature, you know, and mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time working with ECM talking to them about that. And that's in that 20 to 35 minute range from turning these machines on where they're right there. And the Pro 500 does really well in the, in the thermosiphon loops. There is a flow restrictor and the, the manufacturers work really hard to try and make that flow restrictor just right so it gives you the temperature you desired. Now, one thing I do want to point out before we get into pulling shots here, Zach, mm -hmm. um, this is a special edition that's a whole lot they love exclusive right now uh, of the Pro 500 where it has a visible PID control right here. And this is where you're going to set your temperature of the boiler. Uh, also get a shot clock there. And you can see that, you know, you don't want to brew coffee at 250, right? But 250, that's the real temperature inside the boiler. And that's what gets you about 200, which is what we want to brew at uh, for the coffee we're using, which is our, our creme away, but you see the bags over there. Um, also, that'll become a shot clock. But let's pull a shot, right, and see what that's doing. We had just covered this grinder in our last live stream. Uh, this is the Chiato E37S. It's the grinder. It's kind of like our reference grinder. 
that we use here at Whole Latte Love, 83 millimeter burrs, an excellent pairing with any of these machines. And you know, Zach, what's the most important part about making espresso? Consistency. So consistency is always going to be key. So the fact that we can get really consistent temperatures and grind results is going to end up with the perfect cup. Yeah. If you, if you do research and you know, you're looking to get a grinder, they say, you know, you want to, you want to put some money into the grinder. You really do. It makes a big difference. And it's hard to beat the 83 millimeter burr grinder, flat burr grinder, the Seattle E37S over there. Yep, and this is uh, the exact pairing that I usually recommend to everyone. Uh, this is what I dial in with people almost every day on coffee casts, uh, dialing in this Chiado E37S with each one of these machines, and we can get some really nice results. All right, well, I'm gonna get out of your way. I will switch sides here, do a little flip flop. All right. I like to warm up my group head, just a little bit of a pre-purge, and we won't see any difference really in that temperature. And I, yeah, and we're kind of like we must be in the sweet zone because I noticed there was absolutely no bubbling or steaming coming out of there, so we're right at a great temperature uh, with that. Exactly. Now, what do, what dose are you using here, coffee? So weight? right now I have about 19 grams in our porta filter, which is what we were kind of doing when we were covering the E37S earlier, uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, aim for a normale, so okay. uh, doubling those grams out. So I'm shooting for about 39 grams out, and of course we can change that, uh, uh, you know, as we see fit according to taste. And yep. we can actually uh, go ahead and use our flow control even on this. So mm -hmm. I might start at a good stop. Okay. Give a little bit of a pre-infusion, increase that texture, and then uh, go into our extraction. But just so you know, if you don't want to get there, if you get flow control on the machine, um, you, you could just use the machine as normal on these machines with the flow control open about one and a quarter turns from fully closed, no flow is where it's going to operate as it normally would as if the flow control wasn't there. But the flow control just gets you a lot of extra control. It can save you if your grind's not right, but you can also do a lot of things, you know, like Zach just mentioned, to improve the flavor of a shot. When you have the flow control, you also get the group pressure gauge there. And so you're watching that gauge a little bit, seeing when that pressure comes up, and there it is. And you can, you know, if you wanted to back off and a little bit there, you could do that. But you're also kind of visually checking out the shot, right? Yeah. So I don't want to dial in according to flow control. I want to dial in according to the grinder, but this helps me a lot with dialing in different coffees, like mm -hmm. light roasts and dark roasts, uh, depending on my extraction, my flow rate. And if we can get around to the front of that, that front shot of that, Zach, you might have to just pull your hand back, just leave it <laughs> sit there. And just, that's the crema wave, and it really does produce that, that crema, right? And now we're going to do, you're going to froth, right? I'm going to froth some milk, and you'll be able to see right away we have perfect steam temp uh, temperatures right away. And I could even actually be doing this at the same exact time. I just kind of wanted to show off the flow control. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing with the heat exchange machine. You know, if you're coming from a single boiler machine, they call them dual use because you have to transition from brew temperature to steam temperature uh, on a heat exchange machine or the dual boilers. You don't have to do that. You can work simultaneously. And that, that valve you're turning, that's, we call that a quarter turn valve. It's got a spring in there that actually opens and closes the valve for the most part. Yep. And you only have to turn it a quarter turn to full pressure. Super easy to use. We will see a little bit of a difference uh, between this machine and the next. Yeah. Uh, with those quick steam valves. Yes. And also, so just so you understand, on a heat exchange machine, when you change the boiler temperature, you're changing the brew temperature. You also changing the steaming pressure. So you could crank the temperature up a bit and do more of a flush if you, you know, really want a lot more steaming pressure, but it's fine. It does a really nice job, right? Yeah, no, it does perfectly right at our uh, temperature that we prefer. Oh, for I was going to grab you a towel, nope, but nope. you beat me to it. Escaping on by. Very important to wipe your wands and purge them when you're done there. <laughs> Good reminder. <laughs> Even I forget. <laughs> Somebody will yell at us if we don't. Yep. But yeah, you have to, because when you turn them off, it could suck milk back up in there, so you really want to do that. Of course, we put you on the spot with a pour here. First pour of the day, so I'm a little uh, rough right now. But, but like I maybe like by to the say, end, we'll get there. <laughs> hard or not, it's still going to taste the same. It's going to be really nice. Um, now, no, a couple things, and I'm going to get a taste of that, I hope, <laughs> at some point. A couple things to notice on the, on the uh, Pro 500 here. Again, this is an exclusive to us version. It had the shot timer uh, it visible here. If you see this machine other places, 
Uh, that this control will probably be below the drip tray there. Um, so something to keep aware of. It does have the dual gauges here. It's of course an E61 group. And these valves, I talked a little bit about the valves here. These are quarter turn sprung valves. And if you look at the size of this, because if you look at other machines, maybe from other manufacturers, they're probably the valve's gonna be a little bit smaller in most cases. These are very, very big valves. Um, this is what they use on their uh, higher level Pro 700 dual boiler, which is similar to the Synchronica that we'll look at, uh, but the same, same valves there. So let's come over, we'll talk about the, the, six, the 600 here. So now we're into a dual boiler machine. Um, this is where you have individual control of both boiler temperatures. So a lot of people, they may like less steaming pressure, especially if you're newer, so you get more time to work your milk, maybe, or if you really know what you're doing, you just crank that steam pressure right up and you can steam a lot faster, right? Yeah, and this is my go-to uh, dual boiler. So if you're really trying to dive into the hobby and you want something that's kind of like your in-game sort of uh, machine, this is oftentimes what I recommend uh, when getting there, so. And if we can take a look at the PID here. So you're seeing the temperatures alternate. Um, we get a close shot there, yeah. So we're up at, so we're seeing 200, 201. Um, and then you'll see a transition, it, and then now we're at 263. So those are the temperatures in the two different boilers. So if you want 201 on a dual boiler machine, you set the temperature you want. Exactly. To brew at. Yep, yep. Self-explanatory right there, right in front of your face. And for so. those who don't know, I mean, what would you do with a temperature? I mean, a general range, and we're talking Fahrenheit here because we're in the U.S., Yep. is 195 to 205, right? Exactly. So that's range. kind of what we're looking for. That's our, our golden range right there between 195, 205. And the times that you're kind of looking at different temperatures to dial in, I like to say with your lighter roast, I would actually increase that temperature. So you're increasing that extraction with more dense beans. And then you can decrease that temperature with the darker roast, the more brittle beans that mm -hmm. might extract a little bit faster. So you want to decrease that temperature. And, you know, like I, I've done some, some experimenting before. Just so you know, I mean, this very large, massive E61 group, there's a lot of metal here, a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's interesting is how that works because a thermosiphon is going through here all the time um, and keeping everything heated up. That's why you don't like lay your hands on here, you'll get burned. Um, but I did this thing one time where I took a wet rag, set it on the E61 group head for about 10 seconds and took it off and did a scase reading. So it's a very accurate reading of water coming out of the group. And it decreases the temperature a lot. Yeah. Just doing that. I, I was so surprised with the effect that had. But it also goes to show you that, you know, if you're working in an abnormally hot or cold environment, that that's going to have a little effect on your brew temperature here. Yep, and uh, things like cold uh, portafilters can also affect that. So keeping that portafilter on there also keeps the group temperature and prevents a lot of channeling that might happen too, any steam that might be produced within the group head as well, so. So let's pull a shot over here. I'm gonna switch with you again here, give you the room. Um, again, we have the flow control on here. Um, so you'll take a look at that. We have, uh, again, gauges for the pressure of brewing over here and our steam pressure over here. We're running about 1.5 bar in the, in the boiler here. Now, if you would change the temperature, uh, you can adjust that temperature again to change your, your steam pressure. And also on this machine, we do have the quick steam valves. I'm just gonna pre-purge for you a little bit. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Spray me. So, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> And there is a little bit of a difference. So uh, between these machines, you might be able to see that uh, the actual steam wand and the hot water valve uh, mm -hmm. come off to the side. So it's a little bit different, but this could also uh, give you a little bit more room for larger pitchers. So oh, yeah. I could use a larger pitcher on this machine uh, where that might be a little more difficult on that one. And that's just like a, a little bit of a difference between these machines, but it's not drastic or anything that's uh, really gonna be a change uh, that you would prefer one machine more than more so than the other. Now we do have those quick steam valves on on this. Um, there are 600s av available with the with more of the knob style valve that we saw over here. Um, I I kind of like the quick steam lever operated joysticks. Uh, what do you have a preference, Zach? I prefer the quick steam uh, joysticks actually. Uh, I think they're just super easy to use. Uh, sometimes I just don't want to be turning my wrist so much after making millions of shots and doing that same mo movement over and over again. I feel 
Repetitive uh, use injuries, right? Repetitive we, use injuries. We used to call for, right? Yep, yep, exactly. It's much like tamping too. I've almost turned to strictly auto tamps at this point. So. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's go ahead and pull this shot. And again, we'll, we will get a, a timer here in the PID when the shot's pulling. And it looks like you're, are you going to work a little with the... Uh, yeah, might as well. Let's go ahead and use the flow, the flow control. control with a little bit of a pre-infusion here. I'm going to tear off. And we're going to start this at a close. Let's go ahead and actuate our pump. And I'm going to open this one up a little bit faster. As you can see, it starts increasing about three bar for that pre-infusion. And let's go ahead and go on a pretty low flow extraction here. And at the same time, I'm actually going to go ahead and start my steaming process here. And turn that off a little bit before. And again, on a, on a dual boiler or the heat exchange, you definitely can brew and steam simultaneously. And with these quick steams, uh, it does have a locking position when you actually turn it down. Every other position, uh, it'll just be a quick little flush. We talked a little bit about your technique while you're doing this here. Yeah, so if uh, we're steaming milk, I like to think of my pitcher as if it uh, has uh, basically sections. So if we cross this off and we have different quadrants, I like to start right in the center of my milk mm -hmm. and the center of the pitcher. So mm -hmm. I'll follow the tip all the way to the center, about halfway, and then we find that sweet spot, right where we start infusing a little bit of air and creating mm -hmm. that microfoam. Uh, and then that microfoam, we can basically start whirling into our milk. Um, here, I'm not using a thermometer, but when first starting, I do recommend using a thermometer because mm -hmm. you wanna basically infuse air mm -hmm. up until that 120 degree mark. Okay. Um, you don't have to use the whole entire time, but if you're building up foam for uh, cappuccinos or anything like that, you kind of want to utilize that full time mm -hmm. up until uh, a temperature of about 145 to 155 degrees. Okay. And then here, I actually have a couple different pitchers as well. So we have the Fellow Eddie. Uh, we also have the Brewista Nasty Jug as well. So I usually like uh, pouring from the Nasty Jug. And you're okay with pouring this between between pitchers and doing your thing? Yeah, this is a pitcher sharing. So pitcher sharing. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, latte artists prefer to do this because they like steaming in one, maybe more so than pouring in the other. We got a nice overhead shot of your pour here. No pressure. No pressure. And I notice you swirled the milk in there first a little bit to get kind yeah, of yeah distilling canvas. that crema and spilling all over myself. <laughs> all right. Sometimes I need a couple rough pours before I get the good one on the yeah. Synchronica, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so we will come over. We're, you're gonna take a look at the AMG Synchronica. If you guys have questions, get them in now. We have Kristen back there and Brian running the show. We'll say hi to you guys real quick. Okay, so Kristen will forward those questions up to us. Yep. Um, but let's talk about the AMG Synchronica over here. Like this is a special edition, uh, only a thousand made. So what are we talking about in the special edition? Well, we got the brushed stainless special treatment. You'll see the the uh, the logo over here on the side. It's also into the drip tray and the cup riser here as well. Um, also, carbon fiber components. I mean, that's what they use in the Formula One cars, right? That's what they build the bodies out yep. of. Yeah, yeah. Even in this tamp as well. <laughs> with those carbon fiber components. And that follows right through to the joystick here, carbon fiber, porta filters, E61 lever. We have some special uh, speedometer, race inspired gauges here. And they've even changed the colors uh, on, on the, of the lights down here. And of course you get a number. <laughs> we have number two, as I think I mentioned, yep. of a thousand of these that are gonna be available. Now, one thing you should know about the Synchronica this is the easiest machine on the planet, I think, basically, to open up. It's like four screws in the sides and come right off. You have full access to the interior. You now you never really have to go in there if you don't want to, really. Unless yeah. you're doing some serious maintenance years down the road or something. Sometimes I'll do it for fun on coffee casts. I can easily open it up and, and show people the inside and inside workings when they first buy the machine. Uh, yeah. It's easy as that. 
And this is, again, this is a rotary pump plumbable machine. So you can run it from the reservoir up top here, um, which is right up here. If we get a little shot of that, just, there it is. Yep. So right, and that pulls out if you want to, or you can connect a water line into the machine. And one of the things that's kind of unique, I mean, there's other machines that do this, but fairly unique to PropTech and ECM is availability of line pressure free infusion on this. So when you open this lever and you're connected to water line, you're going to get whatever line pressure you have pushing through the machine. So you yeah. can do those really low, like two bar pre-infusions if you want, even one and a half bar. A lot of machines are going to have a solenoid valve on that water input line that's not going to allow that to happen. Yep. Um, yeah, which really helps with that uh, ability to do the pre-infusion without having to use the flow control. If you saw, yeah. sometimes I, I was, when I was triple tasking over here, uh, you know, it's, it, it is a lot to pay attention to. So the ability to do a quick little pre-infusion and then actuate your pump, uh, super easy to do. Uh, I think it is a benefit of doing that in line. Yeah, and the flow control, you can get that on this machine. We don't have this one equipped with it, uh, but again, it does have the ability to do that line pressure pre-infusion. And the same deal with the PID here, you're gonna set your steam boiler temperature uh, and your brew temperature as you want it. So you, instead of like on the Pro 500, we were setting a real temperature in the boiler and then get a driving a brew temperature from that, we're gonna set the brew temperature we want. All right, so let's pull a shot. All right, and let's see if this grinder's still on. Each time, by the way, with this E37S, I've been on 19 grams on the dot. Yeah, this so. is a very, very consistent. So we're doing time grinding. You're using the bottomless here. Yep. So we'll just see how this uh, extraction goes as well. This bottomless is beautiful. These baskets are amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a really nice touch that ECM does to these. Yeah, those are like nanotech precision baskets. So it's a, a basket upgrade on this machine. And it's going to be kind of hard to see here. I'll, yeah, you can sort of see the, yeah, the ECM logos even in there. Uh, so they really, they've really dressed these machines up. Like I say, that, I mean, that, that is, you, you don't get better than the E37S. Exactly. The nice, quick, even when I messed up and forgot to tear my tamp, uh, uh, you know, three seconds later, you, why could, you, were you could hardly again. even tell. Yeah, I was yeah, hoping you wouldn't yeah, notice. So I'm sure everyone out there noticed that, but. Yeah. Get this out of your way. All right. So we're going to go ahead, distribute our grinds. I'll still use a, a little distributor here and go in for a nice, even tamp. You know, a lot of people, they'll WDT, they'll stir up their grinds with the uh, with extra tools and stuff. A grinder like the E37S here, you really don't need to at all. All right, and we'll go ahead and warm up our group head. And we'll go ahead and pull a shot. What cup would you like? There Let's you go. go ahead and use this one right here. Tear out. And we're going to go ahead and pull the, the same kind of shot here. And you know, the bottomless shots are not only beautiful, but they can really help with your technique as well. We're pulling That's a looking nice. it, little bit fast there, but you know, it's about two seconds off uh, comparison to the other ones, considering that we were doing a longer pre-infusion between these. So super yeah. consistent throughout all these machines. And, and I mean, I think it goes to show you a little bit that, you know, like when that you really need to adjust your grind, right? Yeah. Um, depending on the machine, because your grind, and I, I, you know, I, I think it's maybe one of the big misconceptions is that you just set your grinder to, you know, what you need, and then it's going to be good forever and ever, and that's not the case at all, right? Nope. And let's go ahead and check the steam pressure as well. So again, always recommend a little pre-purge. And this does come with that two-hole steam tip. Mm -hmm. And of so, course, no burned wands on all these machines. Yeah, so if you can see, I can hold onto this thing. I just pre-purged, did that whole entire thing. I can hold this whole entire thing. So you don't have to worry about burning your hands anymore. And again, we're going to follow that same sort of technique. I'm going to follow the tip into the center. And then I'm going to go ahead, actually, and go ahead and start whirling our milk a little bit. Let's get make a quick check. We do have some questions, yes? OK, get to those right after this. Thanks, guys. And I will say both the, um, the 600 and the Synchronica 
They go up around two bar of steam pressure, which is going to be more than you'll have available in a machine, like in a heat exchange machine in general. It's, it's a lot of pressure, and heat exchange machines are usually going to be in that, I don't know, 1.3-ish, 1, 1 maxing out somewhere in there, maybe 1.5 in some cases. Last one's the charm. We'll see. We'll see. This is a more cortado size, right? Yeah, so this is going to be more of a cortado size. So not as much room to do anything. We'll see if we can do something. But this is a drink, you know, I, I'm not a big milky latte kind of guy, but, you know.